Hello, fight fans, and welcome back to What's Culture Combat. I am, of course, Gareth, as always, and you probably know by now I'm here today to talk to you all about UFC 248. These are all my predictions coming into this titanic event where we have Israel Adesanya taking on Yoel Romero for the middleweight title, and Zhang Weili taking on Ioana Yudrejcik for the strawweight title. It's a huge event, but there are a lot more fights on this card that deserve your attention. So I'm going to give you my predictions. Obviously, these are just my predictions. If you have anything you think that I'm getting wrong or you don't don't agree with what I'm saying just comment in that comment section below I want to know what you think as well okay so the first fight I want to get into is a prelim fight it's probably going to be the main event of the prelims uh, it is Sugar Sean O'Malley in his return since he's not fought since I think it's March 2018 his return bout against Jose Alberto Quinones um, it's a really interesting bout this because obviously like I just said he's not been fighting for nearly, well, yeah, pretty much two years at this point. He obviously had his suspensions, his USADA suspensions, which he's kind of come to a settlement now. Um, he, he's kind of been disproved of any wrongdoing, anything like that. Um, he claims that it was potentially a tainted supplement, uh, tainted caffeine pills, I think, something that he kind of alluded to. Uh, but he's back now, and he's, he's one of the most um, impressive, let's say, one of the most uh, crowd-pleasing stars that the UFC really have on their roster right now. His array of strikes, his, his spinning kicks, spinning back fists, his stance itself it's something to behold. You need to check it out. Uh, but Jose Alberto Quinones is no walkover either. He's um, he's a very well-rounded grappler. Um, he's quite a decent boxer as well. Got a, a quite traditional boxing stance. He's well-rounded to a certain extent, but he's just not kind of... He doesn't excel in any part of, of his boxing and his grappling. I don't think he'll be able to kind of dominate um, O'Malley on the floor because I don't think he'll get the chance to. I think if he gets too close to O'Malley, Sugar Sean O'Malley, I think he'll get his lights shut out. It's, it's one of them. He's a seriously tough dude, um, um, Kinone. So he's, like, he's, he's got a rock hard chin, but I can just see um, Sugar Sean O'Malley just picking him off slowly. He's got the reach as well. Um, so I feel like in order to do any real damage, Kinones has got to get really close, really tight to O'Malley, and he's not going to let him. It's just not the way he works. He's going to draw him onto him, probably catch him one of his spinning back fist, spinning kick combinations, which is, if you've seen anything of him, check out his highlights on YouTube. He's just something else. So my opinion on this fight is I think that Sugar Sean O'Malley is going to come, out, come away probably with a unanimous decision victory. Okay, so now we're going to jump up to the main card. And you've got a really even clash here between two quite explosive welterweights known for throwing caution to the wind just throwing fists at each other and just hoping something lands just literally driving head on into each other and that's probably the reason it's on the main card because it is going to be one of those smash mouth fights that everyone loves to see on, a, on one of these kind of huge UFC cards um, so uh, Alex Oliveira was meant to have a fight on fight night the last I think last week's fight night but that got cancelled so he's been rescheduled and bumped straight onto this card so quick turnaround for him uh, Alex Oliveira's an aggressive striker he just tends to he punches his way through a storm no matter what's coming at him he doesn't really care about his head kind of being in there he's not going to try and duck and weave he's just going to go straight through you which is really entertaining to see uh, but he's also known for gra um, being a great grappler he can slam you to the mat he can keep you on the floor he can dominate down there as well whereas Max Griffin's probably more of a traditional kind of boxer let's say per se uh, he, he has some serious power in his hands uh, he's known for his spinning elbows as well he, he's got that in his back pocket he can kind of spin out and just catch you out of nowhere uh, but I think overall if you're looking at these two fighters I think it's going to be it's it, it could be ended at any point because they, they both possess ridiculously heavy hands and they, they are just going to go driving head on into each other. It's going to be great to watch, but I think based on his kind of grappling game, I think if this does go the full three rounds, which I think it will do, um, I think his, I think Oliveira's ability to get Griffin on the ground and kind of dominate from that position is going to help him in the scorecards of the judges at the end. Uh, so I believe, yeah, Alex Oliveira is going to win that one by unanimous decision. Okay, so we have another welterweight clash on this pretty epic card. Uh, you've got Neil Magny taking on Li Jingliang uh, in what is considered, again, quite a kind of even matchup. But if you look at Neil Magny, he is a kind of jack-of-all-trades dude. Um, he's a serviceable grappler. He can throw. He can seriously throw. And he's got some big scalps under his belt. He's beat Johnny Hendricks and Kelvin Gastelum. So this guy's not to be trifled with, uh, but he hasn't fought in quite some time now. I don't think he's fought since 2018. Um, so he might have some difficulties kind of getting back into the octagon and picking up where he left off. Um, but I think if you're looking at Li Jingliang right now, he's he's a serious, serious force to be reckoned with in, in that division. Uh, he's coming off a, a string, I think it's three wins in a, in a row. Um, he's looking impressive. The way he kind of closes down space on you, uh, he, d he doesn't give you a second. He just completely suffocates you and he throws bomb, 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 bombs. He just doesn't mess around. And the, vol the sheer volume of his strikes when he does get into his stride and does kind of close down that distance and gets you pushed up against the cage, there's no getting out of it. There's no trying to find a position and getting out of it because there's just another punch. There's another 
another another kick. He's called the leech for a reason. He does he just sucks all the life out of you from just sustaining that energy, from keeping it up, keeping that pressure on you. It's a seriously intriguing matchup. If Magni can get out of the first couple of rounds and kind of survive, I think he's he probably stands a better chance of winning that maybe second half of the second round of that last round. But I can't see him surviving very long against uh, Jing Liang. So I think Jing Liang's going to win this by TKO. This guy means some serious business, and I think he's going to add another scalp to his record with Neil Magny. Okay, now we're going to get into this lightweight clash on this card, and it is Benil Dariush taking on Drakkar Close. Battle of the Grapplers. It's going to be seriously close, this one, because they both quite evenly matched in terms of grappling. Like I've said for most of the fights on this main card, they, they are all really on a knife edge. It's probably one of the most... Um, closely contested cards I've seen in quite some time. It doesn't look like anybody on this on this card is just going to walk over the person in front of him, which is, it makes for a great night of fighting, which is what we love. Uh, but yeah, I believe Dariush, uh, with his kind of black belt in Muay Thai, black belt in uh, Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, he's well equipped uh, for pretty much anything. If he stands up with you, he can throw some incredible kicks, he can put you on your ass. But if it does go to the ground, he's, he, he's got enough kind of tricks in his back pocket to put you in a position where he's going to tap you out. Um, but with Close, you've got a guy who's a serious wrestler. He's a championship winning wrestler. So when you get on the ground and there's going to be a few scrambles, a few kind of clinches, everything else, it's not going to be a walk in the park for Dariush. But that being said, I think he is going to have too much uh, for Close to, uh, on this night. And uh, I think, yeah, if it stays on, stay on the feet, he's going to win by knockout. Maybe by knockout, I'm not too sure. Uh, but I think if it goes on the ground, there's going to be a definite submission victory there for Dariush. Okay, now we've got our straw weight title contest between Zhang Wei Li and Joanna Yadrejcik. I'm so excited for this fight. It's tough to call in one sense because you've got two styles here that could definitely cancel each other out. Um, you've, you've got Joanna Yadrejcik is one of the most probably seasoned title fighters in the straw weight division, if not the most. And um, she, she's been in this situation time and time again. She's gone through the full five rounds. She can dictate a fight. She she knows how to pace herself in these fights and she's yeah she's proven that she's the real deal in these kind of uh, situations but then you've got Zhang Wei Li who's you could say unproven at this level at this kind of top UFC title winning level uh, but the way she announced herself just by completely obliterating just Jessica Andrade obviously she had a hell of a career before that just really sets the tone that she could very really walk through Joanna, which is not something you tend to hear people say often. If you've watched any any of Zhang's uh, videos of her kind of training and everything else, she's a literal stick of dynamite. She just, you set her off and <laughs> everything goes crazy. Um, yeah, so I think if this fight is, if Zhang comes into this fight early on and just tries to steamroll Joanna and Joanna can't deal with that, it's going to be over very quickly, which could definitely happen. She does manage to use those kicks and everything else just to kind of, fight her fight and not fall into the traps that Zhang will set her just by kind of stifling her, which is what she can do. Uh, Yuana stands a very good chance of winning this by decision. But a lot of people are saying Zhang is, isn't proven in these later rounds uh, because she's never gone to the fourth or fifth round. She's only ever gone to the third round. But the fact is we've never seen her go to the fourth or fifth round. So for all we know, she might get even better. She might have a, a gas tank that we've never seen before. She's just never had to. So for me, my, my mind personally, I think it's going to be a Zhang Wei Li uh, TKO victory. I think she's just going to overwhelm uh, Joanna and just kind of do what she do what she's done in the past. Just completely send out an absolute ball of fire worth of punches and kicks. Kind of bully her into the side of the cage and the ref's going to call it off by TKO. That's what I think is going to happen. And now we've got to the main event. It is Israel Adesanya taking on Yoel Romero for the middleweight championship. And this one... This one has Blockbuster just written all over it, doesn't it? You've got Yoel Romero, who's an absolute firecracker in more ways than one. Uh, one of the most explosive, kind of unpredictable fighters you'll ever see. Uh, he throws knees, throws punches, takedowns, whatever he feels like in the moment. He'll literally just do things to get inside your head. So it looked like he's going to uh, stay in his feet for the most of the round, and then he'll just start randomly taking you down just because he can. Don't forget, he's a silver medal uh, a, Olympic level wrestler, uh, but he doesn't tend to use that grappling prowess as much as what he can really. He's got that. He's probably one of the best wrestlers in all the UFC who just doesn't use his wrestling. It's madness. But he's coming up against a guy right now who's probably the hottest property in the company. He, he talks a good game. He's incredibly popular, but his record does the talking too. He's beat um, Anderson Silva. He's beat Kelvin Gastelum. He's beat Robert Whittaker. He's beat serious names in that middleweight division. And he doesn't look like stopping anytime soon. Um, he's got this incredible style where he can just kind of faint and trick people into throwing punches, trick people into protecting in the wrong parts of the body and then he strikes but he's one of those guys where he could probably kind of roll you over in the first couple of rounds but then equally he likes to download the information likes to see what you're going to do see what you do when you put in certain positions when 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 you know a certain shot's coming what what your boy does to react to that so then he can plan when he goes to that shot okay you leave this open i can catch you with this with yoel he fights in a very similar style to robert whittaker um so he's gonna try and stick he'll, he'll just kind of pick his shots against israel i don't think he's just gonna go in guns blazing and knock him out straight away uh, but then he'll just flick a switch 
switch and go, which is what Robert tends to do. He just kind of, he, he'll pick off and kind of uh, box a very smart fight, and then he'll just go right, pull down the lever, boom, I'll steam, I'll steam roll straight through you. Whereas Izzy likes to keep his distance, he's got an incredible reach, and um, I think he'll just try and lure Yoel onto him as the fight goes on. I think Yoel tends to run out of steam as the fight goes on, Izzy just tends to keep on trucking. Um, I think it's going to be a decision victory for Izzy. I can't see him putting away Yoel, because uh, again, he's just got a chin of steel. Um, but as does Izzy. Izzy. Izzy's chin doesn't get enough respect. It, that people think that Yoel could just throw a random me. He needs to get up there for a start. But if he just throws an, an incredible bomb, he could just knock Izzy out. That, that doesn't look like, look like it's been the case. Izzy can take a shot. Uh, so my, my prediction, a long windy prediction, is that Israel Adesanya is going to retain his middleweight title, celebrating yet another victory, probably with some kind of weird celebration. And it'll be really good and we'll all love it. Okay, those have been my predictions for UFC 248. Let me know what you guys think, whether you think I'm completely wrong, who you think is going to win what fight and how. And um, yeah, I can't wait to see what happens on this night. It's going to be one of the closest kind of contested cards I've seen in recent memory. Um, be sure to join us on Sunday for UFC 248 ups and downs. That's a weird mouthful. Uh, but yeah, because I'll be there and I'll be talking about all the things that went down on the event and it'll be an absolute joy to see you there too. Hope you have the best of weeks. Hope you have the best of fight weeks. I will see you very soon. Do not forget to like, share, click on that subscribe button to all things What Culture Combat. I have been Gareth and I'll see you soon.